Aunt Marge thrusts a wet umbrella at Harry as she bustles into the sitting room with her bulldog, Ripper. Uncle Vernon, I need you to sign this form. What is it? Nothing. Yeah. School stuff. Later, perhaps, if you behave. I will if she does. Oh, you're still here, are you? Yes. Say yes in that ungrateful way. Oh, good of my brother to keep you. He'd have been straight into an orphanage if he'd been dumped on my doorstep, Vernon. Really. <laughs> She greets her nephew, Dudley. Take me to sit this upstairs. Okay. Harry clears the table. Finish that off, Mum. Ripper licks a plate. Come on, tap your mum. Just a small one. Excellent, nosh, Julia. Yeah, a bit more. Usually, just a fry up for me. What with twelve dogs? A bit more. That's a boy. She gives Rip a brandy, then glares at Harry. What are you smirking at? Where did you send the boy, Vernon? St. Brutus's. It's a fine institution for helpless cases. And they use a cane at St. Brutus's, boy? Uncle Vernon gives Harry a warning look. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I've been beaten loads of times. Mm. Excellent. I won't have this namby pamby wishy washy nonsense about not beating people who deserve it. But you mustn't blame yourself about how this one turned out, Vernon. It's all to do with blood. Bad blood will out. What is it the boy's father did for you? Nothing. He, did, he didn't work. He was, was unemployed. And a drunk, too, no doubt. That's a lie. What did you say? My dad wasn't a drunk. Her glass shatters. Don't worry, don't ask, I have a very firm grip. I think it's time you went to bed. Quiet, Vernon, you. Clean up. She clicks her fingers at Harry. It's nothing to do with the father, it's all to do with the mother. You see it all the time with dogs. If there's something wrong with the bitch, then there's something wrong with the pup. Shut up! Shut up! Harry shakes with rage. Lights start to flash and plates rattle. As Aunt Marge wags her finger at Harry, the tip begins to swell. Her cheeks bulge. Her bottom swells to fill the chair. Ladders appear in her stockings as her legs grow to twice their normal size. The seams on her tweed jacket burst apart. Her neck inflates, and the top button of her blouse pings across the room and hits the clock. Vernon and Petunia watch with horror. Dudley goes on eating. Vernon! Vernon, do something! Rick bites Vernon's leg. Aunt Marge rises into the air. The beads of her necklace scatter. She bursts out of the chair. A flying button hits Dudley. A second button knocks him sideways. Marge grabs the tablecloth. She floats even higher and hits the ceiling. Aunt Marge turns upside down, showing her bloomers, and floats into the conservatory. She bumps against the glass roof. She sails out into the garden. Vernon struggles after her, with Ripper clinging to his leg. He grasps her hands. Ripper is still attached. All three are lifted off the ground. Vernon lets go and falls under the grass. Aunt Marge floats away like a huge balloon. Helplessly, Vernon and Petunia gaze after her. Dudley is still eating and watching television. Harry quickly runs upstairs. Really kicking the cupboard, he sits on his bed. He looks at the photograph on the bedside table of his parents dancing happily together. He drags his trunk down the stairs and points his wand at Vernon. You bring her back! You bring her back now! You put her right! No! She deserves what she got! Ah! You must keep away from me! You're not allowed to do magic outside school? Yeah, try me. They won't let you back now. You've nowhere to go. I don't care. Anywhere's better than here. 
Harry leaves the house, dragging his trunk on a small set of wheels. In the distance, Aunt Marge is a faint speck in the darkening sky.